Jeff, it's great to see you. Shares, as I mentioned, they are surging today, but they are still well off their peaks, like many of the pandemic darlings, as you guys face sort of a slower, maybe more normal growth going forward. You're also forecasting margin contraction, though. I know that you guys are making investments through M&A, expanding your suite of products and tools. Are you trying to grow into that larger valuation? What do you think, how do you think investors should be valuing Doximity? Oh, well, thanks for having me, Deirdre. And yeah, it was a strong quarter for us as the market has shown today. We had a 13% beat and a 6% raise in our revenue forecast for next year, which, as you mentioned, uh, takes us to 33% growth for next year, and we're projecting a 40% EBITDA margin. So, you know, quick reminder at Doximity, we're building the physician cloud, software suite that helps doctors save time and provide the best care for their patients. So today, over 80% of all U.S. physicians use us to power millions of digital interactions each day. We do telehealth visits, e-signatures, and news on the latest treatments. Um, so the growth we've had this quarter and the, the raise here to projections really prove that healthcare is finally, slowly, making that leap to digital. And we're excited to help our clients, which include all the top 20 hospitals and all the top 20 pharma companies, catch up from spending only a quarter of their marketing on digital in 2020 to what the Fortune 500 has been doing for a while, which is roughly triple that. In terms of our margins, you asked about our profitability. Uh, I just say that uh, you know, we're proud to reinvest in the business mm -hmm. and keep helping doctors. And again, I think a 40% EBITDA margin guide for next year uh, shows that we're also uh, giving back to investors. Jeff, you've gained so much traction um, among physicians, hospitals, pharmaceutical companies over the pandemic. Is there an opportunity for you guys here in a consumer-facing platform? How might that complicate your existing business? But also, you know, there could be a lot of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So we're not focused on going after consumer at this time. There are a lot of players in that space. You know, my joke in telehealth is that um, you know, everyone wants to be uh, Amazon for healthcare, including Amazon itself, right? And so we see a lot of competition in that consumer space. But where we really, I think, shine is we're the Shopify. We're helping all of those existing hospitals and group practices digitize their practice. And we had a record number of doctors do telehealth visits with us last quarter, 350,000 unique providers, which is more than we've ever seen. What we've seen now is a shift in not only uh, the primary care doctors, but also the surgeons are using telehealth to do their post-op visits because you know, why waste time on what's a 10-minute visit driving for two hours and waiting in a uh, waiting room? So uh, we're excited to keep leaning in to help the existing healthcare system digitize. Jeff, the, the number that really jumped out at me was your 171% net revenue retention, um, showing just the loyalty and the ability to sort of add on as your customers see more value in what it is, you know, full portfolio that you offer. So my question is, when you look at the growth opportunity, how much of it is that broader portfolio that you can offer? How much of it is geographic expansion when perhaps outside of, you know, your core markets, the, um, the spend might not be as strong from the hospital side? Yeah, Carl, great question. And uh, I love it's you strong. raising the stack. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, John. Uh, I can't see. 71% um, growth, yeah, in our existing clients. We grew 79% in, in the last year. So most of that growth is from these existing top 20 pharma and hospitals. And, you know, they're really realizing that digital marketing works. And as the pandemic smoke clears, I think this will continue to move that way. We are less than 5% of the healthcare professional budgets uh, that just the pharmaceutical industry spends. And you know, I love the 171% NRR number, but if you look at our top five clients who are already spending eight figures each with us, uh, it was 190%. So they're growing even faster with us, which to me again shows we've got a lot of headroom to help healthcare make this transition to digital.